Konnichiwa, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to my Japanese Faves series where we'll cover every major type of Japanese food. This lesson is Kushiage. Kushiage is a very popular street food, but the first time I had it was in a dedicated restaurant in Tokyo. As in a sushi bar, my group sat at a long counter across which flowed an endless parade of, quote, stick food, unquote. Kushi means skewer and age means fry, so kushiage is skewers of panko breaded and deep fried morsels of meat and vegetables. But my host simply introduced it to us as stick food, which we enjoyed with a hot communal dipping sauce and plenty of sake and beer. So now I just call it stick food. Kushiage restaurants and food carts offer a wide selection of meats, seafood, and vegetables. Either the guests choose the offerings, which have not yet been breaded or fried, or as I prefer, you can ask the chef to choose who then breads and deep fries his or her choices and passes them across the counter when each one is done, ready to dunk and eat. The sauces are usually served in a communal pot in Japan. If you do this, provide something to, the, to allow the guests to get extra sauce if they want it after the first dip. Double dipping is really frowned upon in Japan. So in Japan, they provide a cabbage leaf or some other, some other implement to allow the guests to get more sauce. An alternative is to provide a small amount of sauce to each guest, which is what I'm doing in this lesson. The skewered food needs to be either bite-sized, like pieces of beef, or long and thin, like shrimp or asparagus. I'll provide a list of commonly available foods in the U.S. In Japan, the list would be much longer. You can combine one or more type of food on a skewer if they would cook at about the same rate. You can also stuff items, say, with cheese or wrap them in bacon or prosciutto. Let your imagination be your guide. In Japan, each skewer would be served when it's hot, or maybe five skewers of the same thing would be served at the same time to five guests at the counter. The guests can either eat the food off of the stick like a popsicle, or remove the pieces to an eating plate with chopsticks, which is more common in restaurants. So provide chopsticks and an eating plate for each guest. One more thing, don't confuse kushiage this lesson, which is fried stick food, deep fried stick food, with kushiyaki, which is skewered grilled food. So let's start cooking. All right, now I'm preparing the shiitake mushrooms uh, to be used uh, for kushiage. And um, what I want to do is I want to get them just soft, okay? I don't want them to be, you know, so when, they, when they're fresh, they're hard, they're brittle, they break, right? So if you put them onto the skewer, they may split. So I put them into a hot pan just for a little while until they are starting to get soft, okay? How do you know? So they're no longer hard and brittle. They are now just a little flexible, okay? So these are ready. I'm going to take these off of the heat. Okay, here we have the little potatoes that we're going to use. You can see they're pretty small, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to boil those until they are just pierceable with a uh, toothpick when the toothpick just goes through, okay? So I'm putting them into um, cold water, bringing up the heat, and cooking them until you can just push a toothpick through them. All right, we're also gonna use some of these tiny onions, and what you're gonna do is remove the skin by cutting off the end part, not the root part, but the other end, okay? Just cut it right off, right there, and then plunge these into boiling water for 30 seconds, take them out, put them in a nice bath, and then I'll show you taking the skin off. Okay, here are our onions that are in an ice bath. We're just now going to, they've been, uh, uh, they were uh, blanched in hot water for 30 seconds. Now we'll, we'll just peel off those skins. They'll come right off, okay? We're going to do that to uh, each one of them. I'm not sure if that one was on the camera right, so let's do it that one more time. Remember, you just cut off the end, just the very end here, okay? Put it into uh, hot water for 30, I mean boiling water for 30 seconds. Plunge them into an ice bath. bath and then peel off the skins. We're gonna do that with each one, but not on camera. Okay, now we're gonna take the asparagus. Now you could cook the asparagus in one long stalk. You could cook it raw. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blanch them briefly, then I'm gonna wrap them in bacon, okay? So I'm gonna put these into boiling water for uh, one minute, okay? And then we'll take them out, put them into an ice bath. Okay, I blanched the asparagus for one minute in boiling water, plunged them into an ice bath, and you can see how green it makes them. Now, once they're breaded, it's not gonna matter whether they're green or not, but uh, these have now a little bit of flexibility, okay? It's gonna be easier to put them on the skewer, and um, they will um, 
be a little bit more cooked rather than kind of al dente, which is what you might get if you use the raw asparagus. But like I said, you can use raw asparagus and you can just use a whole stalk, bread that stalk the way I'm gonna bread everything else, deep fry it that way. All right, now we're going to um, skewer so the cherry tomatoes and um, use an odd number, okay? It's uh, in Japan, uh, they, they never use four. They use three or five, okay? So use an odd number if you're trying to be somewhat authentic. You're gonna put, so I'm putting three on three skewers, okay? All right, now we're gonna, we're gonna skewer the potatoes. They cooked until you could just push a toothpick through them, okay? And we're gonna put three on the skewer. Again, as I mentioned, um, it's not common to see four, okay? You usually see an odd number, three or five, okay? So we're gonna put those on the skewer, three on a skewer. Okay, now we're gonna skewer our shiitake mushrooms. Again, stems were removed, okay? And they were cooked just long enough to make them flexible. You see, they're flexible now. Uh, when they're fresh, they are, they're kind of um, brittle, they'll snap right in half. So what we're gonna do is fold it in half and push the skewer through it. And we're gonna put three on a skewer, okay? Okay, here we have our scallions and we are going to, I've already cut off the ends, okay, now we're going to cut them to be about mm, an inch, maybe a little over an inch long. And you can get three, these three scallions here, you can get about three uh, lengths from that. The rest we'll use for something else. Okay, now we're going to skewer the scallions and I'm going to use, since I had three scallions, I'm going to use one piece from each one of the cuts, okay? So you're getting three different pieces. You're getting a piece of all white, a piece of uh, kind of uh, white and uh, green, and then you're getting a piece that's more green, okay? And we're gonna do that with each one of our scallions, okay? And again, use um, an odd number, three on a skewer, three or five. All right, now we're gonna skewer our little onions, okay? And uh, what we're gonna do first is remove the root end, okay? We had to leave the root end for when on when we were blanching them, but now we can take the root end off. And we'll do that with each one of the onions. Now we're gonna skewer the onions. Now, once these are breaded, you won't be able to tell that some are red and some are white and that some are yellow, but for presentation, uh, when the guest is choosing what they want cooked, uh, the Japanese will try to make it as attractive as possible. So we will use um, a red onion and a yellow onion and a white onion on each skewer, okay? And again, put an odd number on each skewer. All right, now we have some uh, snow peas, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna blanch these for one minute, again, to make them more flexible so we can get them on the skewer better without them breaking. So you're gonna drop them into boiling water for one minute, then plunge them into an ice bath. All right, now we're gonna thread the um, snow peas onto the skewers. What we're gonna do is just put it in one end, out, and then back in the other end, okay? So we've kind of threaded it onto the skewer, and we're gonna do that with each one of them. Now, if you hadn't um, blanched them, this would be a whole lot more difficult. They'd probably snap. Okay, so we're going to do this with each one of the pep, with each one of the snow peas. And if you have a couple of short ones, like this one's fairly short, I'm going to put two on the same skewer. Okay. All right. Now we have the shishito peppers, and these we're going to uh, we're going to skewer them one at a time. And uh, these. These particular shishitos were monsters, okay? So um, uh, they were pretty big. I tried to pick the smaller ones for this, uh, and I'm putting one on each skewer. If you had really small ones, you, could, you might be able to get two on each skewer. I'm putting one on each skewer. And if you have, uh, you know, if they're kind of long and uh, kind of bent or crinkly, you can kind of thread them, you know, kind of in and out. Of the uh, of the pepper, like this one's a good example. Coming out one side and going back in, get it on the uh, to get it on the skewer. 
Okay, now for regular onions, large onions, what I've done is I've cut a slice that's about three quarters of an inch thick, okay? And then I cut the slice into uh, wedges, all right? Now what we're gonna do is thread the skewer through the wedge, so we end up with a piece that's kind of pie-shaped like this, okay? We're gonna do that with each one of the wedges. You're gonna have to hold them together until you get them skewered, okay? Now I had one mushroom, this is a um, type of a hen of the woods, I think it is. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna see how that goes, okay? So I'm just putting a, one skewer through that mushroom and we're gonna cook it and see what it looks like, okay? And I'm gonna do some cheese, okay? And what I have here is uh, Taleggio, all right? And you could use um, Camembert or Brie just as well. And I've cut a, a piece that's about, mm, half inch to three quarters of an inch thick and I'm gonna cut that into cubes, okay? And then we're gonna skewer those cubes. I'm gonna put three pieces, no, I'm gonna put two pieces onto um, a skewer. Why? Normally you'd have an odd number, but um, this is gonna be very rich, okay? So I'm going to do two pieces per skewer because I think three might be just a little bit too rich for the average guest to eat a whole skewer, okay? All right, now we have our umabashi plums and these are pickled plums, very popular in Japan. They have a pit, okay? So we're going to carefully press the pit out of the center of them, okay? And some of the plums are going to stay in better shape than others after you do that. But we're going to thread them onto a skewer. They'll be fine once, we're, once we um, uh, bread them and fry them. Okay, so you're just squeezing the pit out of the center. And then we're going to skewer them like we skewer everything else. All right, so we're going to take the plum, push it onto the skewer. We're going to put three on a skewer, okay? You know, I found these great, this great pickled garlic uh, in a Middle Eastern grocery store, and I'm going to um, put onto the skewer uh, one cl clove of pickled garlic and one piece of watermelon pickle. Japanese are really big on pickles, okay? So we're gonna just do some pickles as well for part of this, part of this lesson, all right? So we're gonna put one watermelon pickle and one pickled garlic onto each skewer, and I'm alternating them back and forth so that they make a nice presentation. All right, now we're gonna do the meat, okay? And I have here these uh, meatballs that were made with beef and pork, and we're going, they've already been uh, cooked, and we're gonna do one meatball per skewer, okay? Why are we doing that? Because the meat is much richer, okay? And um, it can stand on its own as a skewer. Okay, now we have uh, sausage, and I've cut the sausage links. You can see they're about an inch thick, and I've cut them into pieces that are about an inch long, and we're gonna do one per skewer, okay? And push the skewers through the center, not through the casing, all right? We're gonna do that with each one. Okay, now we're gonna use our shrimp, and you can see these shrimp are about, um, I'd say, uh, 10 to 12 per dozen, and we're going to do a shallow cut at an angle, okay, about mm, an eighth of an inch deep in the bottom side of the shrimp. As I made one, two, three, four, five cuts, then we're gonna press it out and you can feel it kind of break, snap the back, well, not a back really, but snap it so that it's gonna lay flat, okay? And we're gonna do that with each one of these and that will allow them to stay flat without what? Without curling. Okay. Now we're going to skewer them. Okay. Now, because they have been, they're being skewered, um, it's not quite as important that they not curl because the skewer will keep them from curling. But it's still a better practice to flatten them as I showed you and then put them 
on the skewer that way, okay? So we're gonna skewer each one, starting with the head end, going toward the tail end. All right, now here we have the uh, tsukune. These are chicken meatballs. Now these have been just, just browned, okay? Um, we don't want them to be cooked through, so I just browned them uh, on each side, okay? And so we're gonna put one meatball per skewer. All right, now we have the uh, chicken thigh pieces. They've been cut into uh, strips that are about one inch long by about two inches, and we're gonna thread those onto the skewers. One piece per skewer, unless they're really small pieces, in which case we will um, do, do two. But, uh, so what we're doing again is we're putting it in one side. Oops, it's kind of slippery. Putting it in one side, folding it around, it's kind of threading it on the other side, okay? I'm gonna do that with each piece. Okay, I mentioned earlier that I was gonna wrap the asparagus in bacon. So I have some bacon pieces here. They're probably the width of a piece of bacon and probably about three inches long. We're gonna take two pieces of asparagus. That's the, the, um, uh, the tip part and the uh, lower part and we're gonna wrap them up in a piece of bacon, okay? Okay, then we're gonna skewer them, okay? So I'm gonna find the end of the piece of bacon and I'm gonna press the skewer through, I'm gonna to try to get it through the asparagus out the other side, okay? Again, through the end of the piece of bacon through the asparagus and out the other side. All right, now here we have the anchovies. Now these are not canned anchovies. These are anchovies that have been preserved uh, in oil. And anchovies are very big in uh, Japan, fresh anchovies. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna thread them onto the skewer, one per skewer. Okay, here we have the vegetables. These are ready to be um, dredged and fried. And we have the shiitake mushrooms. They were cooked just enough, uh, stems removed, and cooked just enough to make them flexible, then they were skewered. I have this one piece of, I think it's Hen of the Woods, just because I have it. Then I have the uh, small potatoes. They were cooked until you could just push a toothpick through them, and they were skewered. Then we have the um, snow peas. They were blanched for one minute, plunged into an ice bath to make them more flexible, then they were skewered. The uh, onions were cut into wedges. You can see it's about three quarters of an inch thick, and then a wedge cut from the circular part of the onion, and then they were skewered. They were not blanched. Same thing with the scallions. They were just cut into three pieces, and then they were skewered without being blanched with a white piece, a part that's kind of green and white, and a part that's green. Then the cherry tomatoes, they were just skewered right onto the skewers. The shishito peppers, the same way. The little onions, uh, we cut off the end, not the root end, but the other end, plunged them into water for 30 seconds, plunged them into an ice bath, removed the skins, cut off the root end, and then they were skewered. Now, these have not been uh, seasoned. I'm gonna just sprinkle a little bit of salt over um, these, uh, this, these vegetables, but the salt may not stick very well because they're dry. It might stick better to the mushrooms and these potatoes, uh, but we're gonna salt them again after they've been uh, deep fried. The salt will stick to them as long as you do it right after you fry them. All right, now here we have some of our proteins. First we have the sakune, those are the chicken meatballs. They were partially cooked, just browned on each side, but not cooked all the way through. They were seasoned when the meatballs were made. You can see my separate lesson on making uh, sukuni for an udon dish, and I'll probably post a separate lesson just on making sukuni. And then we have here the shrimp. Uh, these have not been seasoned. We're just going to do a little bit of light salt on them, just very light. We're gonna use some more salt after they've been fried. And then here we have the anchovies. I'm not gonna put any salt on those. Okay, so that's part of our proteins. Okay, here's some more of our proteins. These are the pieces of chicken thigh that were threaded onto the skewers. I'm going to lightly salt those as well. And again, we'll put a little bit more salt on them after they come out of the deep fryer. Now here's the rest of our um, ingredients, uh, partly proteins. We have over here the sausage pieces that have been skewered. 
We have here the beef and pork meatballs. We have the asparagus that were blanched for two minutes, plunged into an ice bath, and then they've been wrapped in bacon. Then we have here the Taleggio cheese, and then we have the pickled garlic and pickled watermelon rind, okay? And then we have the pickled ume plums. All right, now let's talk about salt. Uh, I'm not gonna put, add any salt to the ume plums. Uh, I'm gonna put just a little bit onto these skewers here. And I'm not gonna add any to the cheese. Uh, I'm gonna put just a little bit onto the uh, sausage. I'm not gonna add any to the meatballs because they were um, seasoned when they were um, made. And I'm not gonna add any salt to uh, the bacon and um, asparagus because the bacon's already has some salt in it. And again, we're gonna do a little salt after they've been deep fried. So I've showed you all the food. Um, in a stick food restaurant, uh, if you were selecting the food, this would kind of all be laid out in a uh, case kind of like you see sushi in a sushi restaurant. And then you can either point to things that you want, usually you point to things that you want, or you tell the chef. Uh, what I prefer to do is let the chef decide. So you just sit down at the counter with your friends, you drink sake and beer, and then the chef decides what he is, he, almost always he, what he is going to um, cook for you and then pass over the counter to you, just like happens in a sushi restaurant. All right, let's talk about sauces, okay? You can have, um, you can have, you can all use all different sauces, okay? What I'm using tonight is um, tonkatsu sauce that's been thinned with a little bit of water to make it more dippable. This is traditional tonkatsu sauce. I have a separate lesson on making that. I also have some Okonomiyaki sauce that's been thinned to make it more dippable. In fact, I think I'm going to add a little bit more water to that, thin it a little bit more. Then we have in the middle here, Ponzu sauce. You could also use tempura sauce. You could also use gyoza sauce. And I have separate lessons on making all of those. I have also a video on uh, demystifying Japanese shoyu-based sauces and another video demystifying Japanese dashi-based sauces. Uh, and then we'll also serve a few lemon wedges per person, per guest. And then we'll also give them a little bit of sea salt in case they want to add some more salt. And then uh, either sashimi togarashi or ichimi togarashi. Sashimi togarashi is seven spice powder. Ichimi togarashi is kind of a spicy powder. I think they're both very similar. If I were Japanese, I might not think so. But I think they're both very similar. Okay, so those are our sauces. All right, now here I've put the panko breadcrumbs into this Ziploc bag, and um, they're fairly fine breadcrumbs, but I want them to be even finer. So now that I have them in the bag, I squeeze the air out, and now I'm just gonna use this rolling pin and roll them on the, on the board here to um, make them finer than they were, okay? Okay, there we go. I can see that they're much finer now. They're, you know, they're not powdery, but they're uh, uh, substantially finer than they were uh, before I rolled them out. Okay, now we'll put them into our dredging pan. Now you can use any kind of a pan you want for dredging, but it's best if it has a flat bottom. It's easier to work with that way. You put the uh, flour into one pan. You put the uh, egg into another pan and the panko into another pan. There we go. All right, now here we have our dredging set up. As I mentioned, it's a lot better to have a flat bottom pan. These are specific dredging pans, but you could use a plate with a flat bottom as well. Just, you should have enough of an edge around the plate so that things don't slop out of the plate, especially the egg, okay? So first we have the flour. All the food goes first into the flour. Then we have um, the, uh, the egg just a couple of um, lightly beaten eggs, and then we have the panko breadcrumbs that we rolled to make them a little finer. And once we put the food into the flour, uh, we're gonna try to work very clean. So we're gonna put it in there, try to turn it over with the, um, uh, with the skewer itself, and if we need to get some more flour on it, we're gonna use the spoon, so we try to work clean. Okay, now I'm just gonna show you a couple of examples of the breading, okay? First, we're gonna dredge our uh, food in some flour, shake off the extra, then put it into the egg, okay? Get it coated with the egg. If you, if you don't, 
if it doesn't coat kind of on its own, you can use the spoon and coat it a little bit better. And then put it in the panko, all right? You want to get some uh, panko all uh, to, coat it, to coat it well. Um, what's the difference between uh, this and tempura? Um, they're similar in a lot of ways. Uh, you're using flour uh, in, for tempura batter. Uh, some people use egg. I don't use it anymore. Um, you don't use panko. Um, but they're two different styles of food. And in Japan, you know, the restaurants that really specialize. And you might have a restaurant that does just only tempura, only uh, kushiage, only uh, udon, only ramen, okay? And they try to do the best of that, all right? And one big difference between this and tempura is that tempura batter, the chefs go for making it as light and airy as possible. This isn't that. This is breaded with breadcrumbs, and it's a it's a uh, kind of a thicker, firmer uh, crust on the food. It's not light and airy like tempura. Okay, let's do a couple more. Uh, here's our uh, our um, anchovy, and we're gonna get those coated with a little bit of flour, get them coated with some egg, and then get them coated with some panko, okay? And uh, let's see, we'll do one more. We'll do a piece of the chicken, okay? Um, now see, the chicken is folded on the skewer, so what you might need to do is, um, you might need to use the spoon to get to the places that you can't get to by just laying it down in the in the uh, flour. And then the same thing you might need to do with the egg, okay? There we go. And then you're going to do that same thing with all of the food. Uh, now some people do this by mixing the egg and the flour together, making a batter, uh, and then putting it in the panko. You can do that. Uh, some people will use um, something narrow and deep, full of egg, that you can dip the skewer of egg into. You can do that too. Um, but I do recommend that you use something with a flat bottom. It makes it easier to do the breading. All right, now let's start heating our oil. And I have the uh, oil in a deep fry pan. You could use any kind of a uh, deep bottom pot. You just don't want the oil to be up too close to the rim because if you knock it or anything like that, it could spill, okay? And it's very hot, you know, once the oil gets really hot, it's dangerous. All right, so now uh, I'm gonna use at least, I want you to use at least 32 ounces. I'm gonna be using almost closer to two quarts, okay? And what we wanna do is bring that up to 350 degrees we want to bring it up slowly. Don't let it shoot past 350. Once it starts to get close to 300, start moderating your heat so that you can get it to, to hang right around 350 degrees. Okay, our oil is up to temperature, and we're going to follow convention and do some vegetables first, okay? So I'm going to do my first batch, and that was the tomatoes, the scallions, the snow pea, the onion wedges, the potatoes, and the little onions, okay? Now we're gonna keep an eye on those and we're going to uh, not let them stick together, okay? And we're gonna let them deep fry until they are golden. Okay, these are looking good. So we're gonna remove these and we're gonna drain them on uh, brown paper, you could drain them on a rack if you want to, and we're going to salt them right away, and uh, we're also going to check our uh, oil temperature, I can see that it is uh, still at 350, so we're going to put in our next batch in just a moment. Okay, for the next batch we're going to put in our cheese, our shiitake mushrooms, shishito pepper, uh, pickled garlic and pickled watermelon rind, uh, ume plum, and the asparagus wrapped in bacon. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to keep make sure they're not sticking together. I'm going to let the one with the asparagus wrapped in bacon go a little bit longer because that bacon is raw. So I'll take that out last. Okay, these are looking good. We're going to take those out. 
Drain them on uh, brown paper or on a rack. Get a thermometer back on there. There we go. And oh, that was the asparagus wrapped in bacon. We're going to let that one go just a little bit longer. Now, while I'm letting that go a little bit longer, I'm going to salt the other pieces we just took out. Okay. Okay, we're going to take that one out, salt that one too, check our temperature to do the next batch. Okay, now we're going to do the shrimp and the anchovies. Okay, that's looking beautiful. We're going to take them out. Salt them, check our temperature to do the next batch. Okay, this is the last batch, and in this batch I'm doing all of the chicken pieces, or several of the chicken pieces, in uh, one batch. And um, this is raw chicken, so I'm going to give them a little bit longer. Um, and uh, also, I'm, I have one in this batch, I have one piece of the, uh, the sausage. Again, that's uncooked, so we're going to give that a little bit longer too. Okay, it's been about mm, three to four minutes for these uh, chicken pieces. I'm going to take the chicken pieces out first. Again, drain them on brown paper or a rack. And I'm going to leave that piece of sausage in there just a little bit longer. Okay, now there's other food I need to cook, but I'm not going to do it all for the camera. Okay, and the sausage looks good. Okay, I'm going to take these out, drain them on brown paper or a rack, salt them immediately. Keep them warm until you're ready to serve. Okay, here we, we've plated up one selection for um, one guest. And so we have one piece of all of the foods along with some, uh, you can see it on here. Can we see this? No, you can't see this. Uh, some sea salt and some uh, sashimi togarashi. And then we have the sauces. We have some okonomiyaki sauce and also some uh, uh, traditional tonkatsu sauce. They've both been thinned a little bit so that they're more dippable. And then we have uh, some ponzu sauce as well. And of course, some sake to wash it down. So you can see photos of the final dish on my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice Cook Like a Pro. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.